Today on Tim and IT Jams, we have Sarup Chandran, who is the Director of Product Management for SonicWall. Um, so if you've watched our previous SonicWall IT Jam, you'll know that SonicWall is a global cybersecurity company specializing in firewall network security and cloud security and more. Um, so welcome to the Jam, Sarup. Thanks, Nick. Thanks for having me on. It's a pleasure to be here. No worries. To, so to start off, um, Endpoint security has been brought under the spotlight uh, throughout the pandemic, especially because of the rise of bring your own device policies um, because of remote working. So could you um, just go through some examples of the risks of this? Yeah, I think there's been a significant challenge in this whole year, right? We're starting with, um, you know, when people had to suddenly go offline, uh, the various uh, shelter in place and lockdowns as various countries would like to call it. And remote working, you know, was in initially quite a bit challenging because not every business could afford to just send devices out to their employees um, or to be able to kind of prepare for what they needed to do to protect themselves as well. Um, so BYOD became, you know, a, an initial norm of sorts. And that in itself represents an unknown quantity for most corporate networks because they don't really know who's using the device. I mean, we really tend to think that, okay, BYOD means it's your own PC or laptop and, you know, people are just using it for work purposes. But this whole situation brought about a completely different change. And the biggest one, I think, is with the children going online for their schooling as well. So now children are going and doing their classes online, which means they have their own applications, maybe their own, uh, you know, sort of websites that they have to visit and you know, it becomes sort of a shared machine. Uh, so what are they doing on it? What applications are they downloading and running on it? Are they risk-free or not? Are those websites that they're visiting, are they malicious or not? These are all unknown quantities for a corporate network. And traditionally, you'd only find security savvy people actually putting some sort of controls in their homes. Um, you know, whether it's a, a home firewall or some kind of a, um, an antivirus technology that's actually up to date and is, um, has a valid license for protecting their endpoints running on all of their home machines. That's not, it's not normal for a typical home user. You know, you're just most, more often not happy with that router that your ISP gave you. So net net, this device that, you know, um, employees are using to connect to corporate networks is all potentially already compromised before they even connect it to the corporate networks and nobody knows. You, you as an IT admin or as a security admin have no idea what this device is and you know whether it's something that's already going to be able to compromise your network or your data when the employee connects to either your on-premise network or your cloud applications. Right. Um, and from your perspective, what are some of the solutions to this problem of BYOD? I, I think, I think the, the one thing that's obviously become very apparent in this situation is um, you know, I, I like to quote X-Files on this, right? Trust no one, you know, and that's really what the new uh, mantra is, zero trust, right? What uh, enterprise IT admins uh, or business admins uh, of IT networks are really looking for is sort of a continuous assurance that the user who's connecting to the network or to the app, cloud applications, that you know, coming from devices that are, uh, that have the assurance of being protected, you know, wherever they are, right? And more often than not, what you end up having to see is that while BYOD is cool, you want to be able to mandate that whatever device that you're using is protected and is secure, or at least meets some basic security parameters, right? So this may, this may for one, mean that uh, you'd have to send out laptops or you'd have to take um, control of devices. So, um, you know, for a, a, tradition, a typical user who's recently signed on to um, a Microsoft 365 service, for example, what you realize is that, um, that never mind what security the Microsoft platform may bring, um, that's one, one thing apart, but when you do sign up for a Microsoft 365 service, the first thing they ask you is, are you okay with your organization taking control of your device? Because that's really important. And once that control's in place, now the security admins have the ability to go and deploy something like an endpoint security solution uh, that will protect them from various threat factors. Uh, you know, it could be um, malware, ransomware, the most advanced form of threats. And there's a different form, a whole different set of, you know, kind of threats that you want to be able to um, protect the employees from. But And that's why 
um, you want to do not just put in security to protect them from the threats, but you also want to do some form of attack surface reduction, right? which is sort of the technical term of saying, can we reduce the probability of being compromised? And so that you go beyond antivirus, you go into things like, uh, do we know if there's vulnerabilities on this endpoint? Uh, can we control what websites these users go to? Um, can we uh, disable the ability to use removal devices? Right? Removal devices is a, is a big problem because um, you know malware tends to stem from there, but, and you know there's been various studies that show people are unfortunately quite silly. Um, if there's a USB device lying around somewhere, they just pick it up. They don't really think about you know is this potentially a social engineering attack on me? Um, so endpoint security or any security solution for these kinds of endpoint risks has to sort of cover the gamut of challenges that you're actually going to run into with a variety of different features that you want to be able to deliver. Right, yeah. Um, and it's becoming clearer that uh, security policies need to be tailored for each organization increasingly. So um, how do you deploy a best fit solution that meets specific requirements for different organizations? So yeah, and the, you know, different organizations have different requirements for I guess different reasons, right? You know, I'd like to say that some would say, hey, we don't have the budget to pay for security, and so we'll just go with the cheapest thing out there. I, I think that's probably not the wisest decision to make. Um, yes, budgets are challenging, and this economical climate is not exactly the best, best uh, scenario to be thinking about spending a lot more money. Um, but definitely go with technologies that use modern capabilities. Um, you don't want signature-based technologies. You want uh, things that are more focused on behavioral and machine learning type technologies that don't really wait for an update to be able to protect you from the latest threat out there. Um, and then, you know, organizations that have flexible, or I should say more granular requirements for what endpoint security they have, uh, you know, you want to be able to pick and choose what features you're deploying at these endpoints. Um, you know, antivirus or next-gen antivirus type capabilities is an obvious choice. Um, but some customers are not very um, comfortable with, hey, my, my IT admin is going to be able to do content filtering and everything I do from home, oh, you know, even if it's during work times. Well, then we'll turn off the feature and we'll figure out a different way to do it. Or you know, I, I have the need to be able to use mobile devices for my job because um, I use it for all kinds of data transfer when I go to you know, uh, critical sites or something of that sort. And well, we need to be able to disable that or only limit that to a certain set of people. Uh, so there's a few different things that it's obviously going to be um, required to be able to have that kind of flexibility, right? Um, one is you want um, the ability to have granular policies. You want the ability to be able to pick what features you want to choose. Um, you want to be able to decide whether you want to use a baseline policy that's recommended or do you want to customize it in whichever way you want. Um, and as you go, as you go kind of spread this out to the ownership and the accountability out to MSSPs or the larger organizations, they start thinking down the lines of, okay, I have a few endpoints in my environment that want some features, others don't. I have a few endpoints that would like to block everything and others would just like to be able to alert it of, other, of, of certain threats. Um, and then MSSPs work similarly as well. So when they're operating multi-tenant environments, um, they have some customers that have some types of policies and other customers that have other types of policies. And while you want granularity and flexibility, you need a console that is able to give you all of that at scale, right? And, you know, we're very lucky. I think our customers are definitely very lucky with the fact that our product, which is Capture Client, um, has that and a lot more, right? You know, with our partnership with Sentinel One, we bring the best in class next gen antivirus technology to our customers. but We've also added our own sort of flavors to it with the uh, content filtering and our capture ATP service as well. And combine that with a cloud-based management console, which brings all that flexibility, we think our customers have a win-win situation. Awesome, cool. Um, well, that concludes today's uh, Team at IT Jam with Sonic Wall, Director of Product Management, Sarup Chandran. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, thank you, Nick, and have a great day, folks.